Yes, they practice amen. righteousness. Yes. That's the way you can be healed. Uh, so I wanted to give you that testimony uh, about last week's teaching. Okay, let me just yeah. welcome Mary. Mary, welcome. That, 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 what we, that what we are teaching about is real. And, and, yeah, amen. Amen. and it applies to us uh, as well as to you. And, and so I hope you take it and apply it in your life. Now, the title of the message tonight is Exchanging Thoughts. Mm. And what you think matters. It, yes. it's, but it's not just what you think up here. It's also what you think in your heart. For Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so, so is, is he. he. And see, the rest of that verse says that he tells you to eat and drink, but he's not with you in his heart. And so uh, he was double-minded. He was saying things with his mouth, mm -hmm. but they were not consistent with his heart. So as you think in your heart, that's who you are. And that's who, who God is to you and who you are. Uh, and it's very important. So thoughts are very important. So we're going to talk about thoughts today. And the real key uh, scripture here is Isaiah 55 verse 9 and God says as the heavens are high higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways Amen. and and get this my thoughts are higher, higher than, than your thoughts. thoughts okay so this is where the title comes from exchanging thoughts. thoughts we cannot take our negative thoughts our worldly thoughts our carnal thoughts and build on them and improve on them until we're thinking like God. No, we have to get rid of the negative thoughts, the negative things in our life and take on his. If you want to partner with God, you have to agree with him. Amos 3.3 3 mm -hmm. says, how mm -hmm. can two walk together unless they be, be agreed? agreed. Amen. How can you walk with God if you don't agree with him? How can you walk with God and live with God if you do not agree with his thoughts? We know that his thoughts are higher than every man, every woman, every person on the earth. His thoughts are higher than their thoughts. Amen. And amen. they cannot take their thoughts and build on them until eventually they have God's thoughts. No, you have to get rid of the negative thoughts and the carnal thoughts and the carnal thoughts and God hates carnality uh car now what is carnality and what is spiritual thinking uh Romans 8 6 says uh Romans 8 6 says to be spiritually minded is life and peace but to be carnally minded is death okay so what is spiritually minded it's it comes from Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, verse 1, of course, it says, If you be risen with Christ, seek mm -hmm. those things which, which are, are above. above. Uh, and then verse 2 says, Set your affections. Now, set, that means it's solid. Set your affections on things above. That's spiritual thinking. So if during the day, you're always thinking about things above, the things from heaven, the things of God. If you're thinking about those things all the day, uh, then you are spiritually minded and you're being led by the spirit. That's the mind of the spirit. And so you're spiritually minded if you're thinking on things above. But if you are carnally minded, what does that mean? Mm. Well, it's not set on things above. It's set on all the things around us on everything we hear on TV and we're reading the papers and, and we watch on uh, the news and, and all of those things. And all of our uh, family are telling us about all of their problems. That's, that's all worldly things. And, and that causes us to be carnally minded because our mind is not our, we haven't set our affections on things, things above, above. I mean, so yeah. that's to be spiritually minded yeah. you have to set your affections on things above and so the, all this carnal mind see that god hates carnality he hates it you know he's he, he's a person who loves and he hates mm -hmm. he hates esau he said he hated esau esau was a 
person who was uh, a biblical symbol of carnality. Ooh, he hated man. him. Now, Jacob uh, was very carnal to begin with, but eventually uh, Jacob became one of our patriarchs of faith. And so uh, he, he, uh, he was an example of somebody that God loved him uh, because he became a spiritual person. He became, he had that potential in him. He had the seed uh, of faith within him and he lived according to that. Now, not to begin with, because it took him a while. First, he was considered a deceiver, but later he became a spiritual person. And he's in our ancestry uh, and the ancestry of those who are in Christ Jesus. And, and so God hates carnality. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean he hates people. He so loved the world. world that he gave his only begotten son, that Amen. whosoever believes in him, him should not, not perish, perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Amen. Okay, so he, he loves the world, but he hates carnality. That's the that's that mind that is opposed oh, to him. Oh, that's good. That's good. Carnality is opposed oh, to him. Mm, now, mm. this is the essence of, of the message. We, we've got to get away from negative thinking and we've got to take on his thoughts and uh, let's think about what i mean by negative thinking well it's about the problems that you encounter about the problems mm -hmm. you encounter and let's say you're fearful i'm going to give you some examples oh, yeah, that's good. Let, yeah. let's say you're fearful uh, about something well we, we can't just build on fear and eventually get to the things of god We've got to do away with fear. And so we have to turn our affections on things above. And what will do away with fear is love. Mm, and so perfect we, love. We have to focus on love. And, and we have to, uh, in order to overcome fear, uh, we have to focus on love. And, and by that, uh, we study in the word of God about love. We, we actually practice Practice, practice love. love. Amen. <laughs> That's what Christianity is about. It's Amen. about practicing righteousness and practicing love. And so you, you can't sit in a cave and say, oh, I, I love people. Well, that's not practicing love. Yeah, that's right. That may be saying one thing. There's no people around you. But your heart may be different than that. So what you speak out may be different. Uh, and so we have to practice uh, our beliefs. And that's what what Christianity is about. It's about practicing righteousness for he who is righteous practices Just righteousness. righteousness. Amen. Uh, glory to That's God. That's good. It's good. See, if we have a problem and you, if you have a problem and you want to solve or resolve that problem, I'm going to show you how to do it. You're going to have to do two things and ask two questions. Ask God, these two questions and that relates to change and the mm -hmm. first one is who do you want to be for me in this situation that's number one question number one you're both of these questions you're going to ask to the lord you have a problem you want to resolve and you you ask him well who do you want, want to, to be, be for me in this situation and i'm going to explain this and then question number two is how do you want me to change well, Ooh, I, glory. well, I probably raised an issue there that a lot of people want to resist and resist any change because yeah. they, they think they've got it all together. Yeah. But if we've got a problem that needs to be resolved, there's something that has to be changed. Right. Now, a lot of people just simply want God to bless them without changing. They resist change. Yes, they, they do. They don't want to change. Mm -hmm. That they think they've got everything they've got a good uh, doctrine they've got a good uh, belief system they've got uh, everything uh, together they just want god to bless them well but i'm going to show you in this message today there's a different way to do that you have to think about things differently because this is about thinking and thoughts mm -hmm. and so we have to begin if we've got problems that need to be resolved whether they're in your work or in your marriage or in your 
family, uh, family uh, or wherever they are, if you want them resolved, you've got to think differently. And, and that's that's where it starts mm -hmm. because every action you take, take comes from, from a thought. I mean a thought that you have. So where is it, where if you're going to change your situation, if you're going to change things, there's got to be a change in your thinking. In your thinking. You cannot be carnally minded and expect God to bless you because he hates carnality. Okay, so let's let's think about who the Lord wants to be in your situation. I want to tell you a story about it. And that is, there was a woman uh, that came up to a minister and said she was terminally sick, only had a few months to live, and what should she do? And he said, well, ask the Lord, who do you want to be for me in this situation? She was terminally ill. That's what the doctors had said. Terminally ill, and uh, she was going to die. And so she asked, she began to pray and seek the Lord, and she asked the Lord, who do you want to be for me in this situation? Okay, that was day one. Nothing happened. So day two, she prayed it again. Nothing, she didn't hear anything. And day, some of you may have heard this story before, but that's okay. Day three, she may have, uh, uh, she asked the Lord, who do you want to be? And it went on for 16 days and she never heard anything. <clears throat> now on the 17th day, on the 17th day, um, she was in a grocery store and this uh, a friend, another woman comes up to her and the woman has a little girl with her. And because they're friends, the two women begin to talk. And then the little girl uh, said, uh, and kept uh, uh, pulling on her mother's dress and said, uh, this is the woman. This is the woman I saw. Well, as it turned out, 16 days before, the night she had a dream and she went to heaven and she saw Jesus had a conversation with Jesus and she saw a picture of this woman on his desk and the little girl said who's that woman well he said that's a woman I want you to give a message to and so he gave her a folded up piece of paper and he said when you see her you give her this piece of paper okay so she comes back and she doesn't see her for 16 days but 16 days earlier she had the dream she had Jesus wanted to tell something to the woman okay and so she pulls out the piece of paper she'd been carrying with her for the 17 days because when she had woken up when she had awakened the night after the dream she had a piece of paper in her hand so she had been carrying the piece of paper until she saw the woman she handed it uh, to the woman. Now, remember, the question the woman had was she was terminally ill and was going to die, the doctors had said, and so she asked the question to the Lord, who do you want to be for me in this situation? And so she got the piece of paper from the little girl, she opened it up, and, and the piece of paper, written on the piece of paper was, I, the Lord, am your healer. Glory mm, to God. That's who he wanted to be. Who do you want to be for me in this situation? I want to be your healer, he's saying. And he, he, he wasn't withholding that information from her. He wanted uh, her to have that information. Well, but that's what the Bible says. You know, uh, I believe it's uh, Exodus 15, 26 says, I am, I am the, God I, the Lord, you. am uh, your healer. I'm the God that heals you. Thee. Yes. Isn't that exciting? Yes. So he wanted to be her healer. Now, in any time, any time you have a problem or a difficult situation, ask the Lord, who, who do, do you, you want, want to be to be for me in this situation? Now, what that means, then the answer is that's the area you need to focus on. So if it's healing and he wants to be your healer, you need to Study the word of God in healing and listen to tapes on healing. Uh, begin to focus on healing, whatever he says. Mm. Okay. And, and be praying and asking about it. 
and, and letting your faith arise. Uh, now, if you don't, uh, see, if you continue in carnal thinking uh, in a situation, well, that uh, your difficult situations can kill you. The thief comes, comes to, steal. to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. And, and so that's what the devil had done. The devil had brought sickness to her that would have killed her. So she needed to get rid of the negative thoughts and, and, and focus on God's thoughts. Hallelujah. See, God's thoughts were, he was the Lord that would heal her, to heal her, the Lord that healed her. <clears throat> and, and so he, she couldn't just keep those thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm going to die and I'm going to die. She can't just keep focusing on those. She's got to turn her affections to things above mm -hmm. and, and, and begin thinking on uh, who the Lord wanted to be for her in that situation. Uh, and again, we can't just take the negative thoughts and begin to build them and refine them and, and uh, do massage them around and, and eventually get to God's thoughts. No, he's wanting to talk us into his situation into a heavenly perspective. He's wanting you to talk you into something. He's not wanting to talk you out of sickness or out of negativity. He's wanting to talk you into his world. Uh, in his world, there is no sickness. Hallelujah! In his world, there is no fear. Amen. In, in his world, uh, there is no lack. So he's wanting mm. to talk you into his world and, and not trying to talk you out of uh, uh, where you are. He's wanting to bring you into him. He said, if you draw near unto me, I will draw, draw near, near unto you. you. And, and so he's wanting you to come into his world and look at things from his perspective. Now, that's the first thing. We have to know precisely uh, who he is and who he wants to be for us in whatever problem situation we're dealing with. If you want it to, if you want your problem resolved, you need to do something about it. You need to be agreeing with him and what his thoughts are. The second question uh, that I uh, suggested that you uh, ask the Lord, this is the second question. Look at uh, baby look. <laughs> yes, yes. How do you want me to change? And many of you may just uh, throw up your hands when I mention change and say, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to change. Uh, there was a woman, and Sherry was <laughs> telling me about this earlier today. There was a woman uh, for a long time that was around us, and she kept confessing, I don't want to change. <laughs> I don't like change. I don't like change. <laughs> change bothers me. Yes, that's I what don't she want said. to change. But, but let me draw your attention. <laughs> to 2 Corinthians chapter mm -hmm. 3, verse 18, that says, we are being changed, changed from glory, glory to, to glory. glory. And so if, you're, if your attitude is, I don't want to change, that, that must be, you must think, well, I, I've, I, I'm in all the glory I want. I don't want any more glory. I don't want to be any closer to God. I've got everything I want. I've got everything going my way. I'm in my comfort zone. I'm in my comfort zone. I don't want to change. It, it takes me out of my comfort zone to change. But let me tell you, we're expected to be conformed to the image of Christ. And, and if you've already reached that, uh, if you've already reached that place where you're already conformed to the image of Christ, well, you don't need to change anymore, but I don't know of a lot of people who've reached that, That's right. that place where they are We're conformed. Pressing, pressing on. Even Paul said in Philippians 3, I'm pressing on. I haven't, yeah, I haven't, I haven't arrived I yet. I haven't arrived yet. I haven't reached the goal yet. He's being, he's being conformed, but I'm pressing into it. And that's what, I think that's where we all are, that we need to press into the goal. And what's the goal? To be conformed to, to the, the image, image of, of Jesus. Jesus again. And that means we have to be changed. If we're not there, if we haven't achieved the goal. If we haven't reached the goal, then we still have to change. And that's real important. We, we do need to change. 
because otherwise our thinking is not in agreement with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we change? It says, mm -hmm. it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. So we're transformed when we change our thinking. Mm -hmm. When when our thoughts see line up that and agree is, with yes. God's thoughts. And, and we cannot take mm -hmm. where we are and think the way we have been thinking the way we thought last year and we can't bring it into this year and think the same way and think that we're thinking God's thoughts. The way we thought last year, the way we thought yesterday, the way we think today has to change in order for us to think God's thoughts. Hallelujah. So set your affections on things above. So all day, uh, be thinking about the Lord. You know, uh, Hebrews uh, 13, 14, I believe, says that uh, we don't have a place here. We don't have a home here, a city here on, on this earth that's permanent, that's going to last, that's going to endure. We're seeking a city, Woo! A, city a city to come. We're looking for something else. You know, Abraham, that's our father of our faith, faith I mean. he, he was looking for a city who's a builder, builder and maker. founder and maker was God. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to be doing. He's our, he is the one that went ahead of us. He's the father of our faith. We need to walk in his footsteps with faith and look for a city mm -hmm. whose builder and, and maker, maker is God. God. Amen. And so we have our affections on things above. Now, Smith Wigglesworth uh, had a confession that, that he said, uh, and was recorded down that uh, he never prayed more than 30 minutes, but he never went 30 minutes without praying. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> now, now, who, who Smith Wigglesworth was? He is an old time evangelist, uh, and uh, he raised, raised a man of faith. He raised 14, 14. or more people from the dead. Uh, he, he, do, he could pull them out of the coffin and raise, uh, uh, put them up against the wall and tell them to walk, and they would walk. Amen. Uh, that was a man of faith. Uh, he could just walk into a building, and people would uh, fall down fall on, their, on knees. their knees and say, "How? what How must I do, do to, to be, be saved? saved? And this was a man of faith. <clears throat> and he said, I never pray for more than 30 minutes, but I never go for more than 30 minutes without praying. So that, that, to me, is a practical way of looking at continually praying, praying without, without ceasing. ceasing. Uh, and, and so I can, see, I can see that he had his affections on things above. He, he never went 30 minutes without prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that's a person that we can follow in, in his footsteps. And he only wanted to talk about the Lord. He would not allow you to bring newspapers or magazines uh, or other reading material into his house. It had to be the Bible. It had to be the Bible. That's the only thing that he could read. And, and that's the only thing he wanted to talk about uh, was, was the Lord. So we need to have our thoughts to be in agreement with God's thoughts. I mean, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's not trying to talk you out of lack. He's not trying to talk you out of uh, sickness. He's not trying to talk you out uh, of fear or worry or anxiety. He, he just has the things in his world that he wants you to come into, into agreement with him for what's in his world. And, and that's a higher realm. <clears throat> and that's where we can set our affections on things above and not uh, on this earth. Uh, be carnally minded is death. I mean, and so if we just keep thinking the same way we've always thought, then it's going to lead to destruction. But we all have people around us who are depending upon us. Uh, and it may be uh, finances or it may just be love or, or wisdom or whatever. You have 
a purpose on this earth and you can only fulfill it if your mind is renewed. Amen. And then we will know God's will. When we renew our mind, we will know God's will. And we can submit our will to his will. There's so many people that need things. They need things from God. Amen. And God is reaching out to all of you. He wants to give you whatever you need. All things are possible with God. This is a time to be encouraged uh, for he has uh, places he wants to take you and things he wants to give you mm -hmm. that you haven't even thought of or imagined, but we're going to have to change the way we're thinking uh, in order uh, for us to see how uh, what he's prepared for us, what he plans for us. We have to put down the negativity, the negative things in our life, uh, anxiety, fear, worry, uh, heartache, and pain. And depression, pain. We have to put all of those things and come into his presence and, and, and receive from him. And we can't sit down here and think that we can control and manipulate God. If we want the blessings of God, we've got to change. And we've got to find out who he is. See, he's got things about himself that he wants to reveal to you that he, you don't know yet. And, and, mm -hmm. and you search these out by the script, in the scriptures by the Holy Spirit and, and take time to seek him, to seek his ways, to seek his thoughts, and then be willing to change uh, that you want your will. Tell him, I want my will to con be conformed to your will. Hallelujah. So that I can be changed mm -hmm. from glory to glory to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And then you will see your problems and difficult situations uh, be destroyed. Yes, because I Because mean, you're going to, yeah. you know, you cannot let your situations challenge your identity in Christ. You have Christ in you. Well, what is the value of having Jesus Christ in you if you don't take advantage of him, if you don't seek him and, and find out what plans he has for and you. And receive from him. And receive from him. What, what is the advantage of having him in your heart uh, in this life? Because in Romans uh, 5, 17, I, I believe it says that we are to rule and reign Amen. in this, this life. life. Amen. You are an overcomer. And so don't let your situations challenge your identity, but let your identity in Jesus Christ, Amen. you are an overcomer, challenge your situation. Oh, hallelujah. See, we're, if, hallelujah. If, if, if we look at the Bible and say, by his stripes we're healed, but then we look at our body and say, well, we're not healed. Who, who are we going to believe? Believe God, believe that he is the truth, and believe your situations and your circumstances are the lies. You, the truth is what God has for you, what God wants for you, what God is wanting to give you, but Amen. you have to receive it by faith. But if you have carnal thinking, uh, then that keeps you at a low level of faith and trust, a low level of hope. Well, to be carnally minded is death. We've got to go to a, to a higher level in, in our thinking. And we cannot have two minds where we uh, have a carnal mind and, and we also have a spiritual mind. You cannot have two minds because James said uh, to be doubly minded uh, that you can get nothing from amen, God. Amen. If you have doubt, uh, don't think that you're going to receive anything from God. If you have doubt. See, uh, Mark 11, 23 says, truly, truly, I say unto you, this is Jesus and what he said, I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain uh, and uh, believe in his heart and, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he say, 
he shall have what he says. So this is the point. If you have doubt uh, and you have belief, some doubt, some unbelief, that's double-minded. And James said, mm -hmm. don't think you'll get anything. But if a man asks for wisdom, if you need wisdom, ask him. If you've got a problem you're facing, you need wisdom to know Amen. how to deal with it. Amen. The questions to ask to get that wisdom are, Lord, who do you want to be uh, for me in this situation? And how do you want me to change and be willing to change? So let me ask you a question. Are you willing to change? Are you satisfied where you are and the way you are? The question is, are you willing to change? You don't have to answer me. Mm -hmm. It's a, something you need to ponder in your heart. Yes, consider. And, and, and tell the Lord, are you willing to change? If you've got situations in your family, in your marriage, in, in your work, uh, in, in the marketplace, if you've got situations that you won't resolve, there are two things that need to be done. You need more information and a, a stronger relationship with God in that area. And you need to change from glory to glory to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here today. I'm Amen. going to turn it over to Sherry. Yeah, and I have I have a few things I just want to for to to submit to all of you and and ask you to to pray about and think about. And um, one, I I'll just I'll go back to my situation uh, that happened 28 years ago with the terminal cancer. Uh, there were many days that the enemy would bring me thoughts, thoughts of death thoughts that my husband was going to marry somebody else, that my children were going to have another mother, uh, that I would never sing again, I would never teach again, because that's what the doctors uh, had told me, uh, that uh, I had six months to live. And, and so all of those thoughts, the enemy would bring back to me on a regular basis, Every bad report that I would get from the doctor, uh, then all of these thoughts would flood into my mind uh, about the situation. And but I will I will tell you this: that the word of God is a a anchor to our souls. And see, the mind is part of your soul, and the word of God is an anchor to your soul. And the Lord had already given me at 3 a.m. one morning, right after they had diagnosed me, um, Psalms 118, verse 17. You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That was an anchor to my soul. And every time I would get a bad report and the thoughts would come to my mind about evil things that were going to happen, and about death, that scripture would come up in my spirit because the Holy Spirit will remind you of the word of God. And it would come up in my spirit, man, and it would say to me, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I would begin to confess it and say it out of my mouth. Now, the Lord shared with this with us was it this even today? That your thoughts and your tongue are connected. Your thoughts and your tongue are connected. If you think on something long enough, you're going to say it. You're going to speak it out. If you think about it long enough. And so your thoughts, like Brother Fred was, he has been telling us tonight, our thoughts need to be at a higher level, at a higher level, because that's where God's thoughts are. God's thoughts are healing, prosperity, peace, joy, love, forgiveness. Those are his thoughts. Hallelujah. And so I wrote this down because I feel like the Lord spoke it to me just a few moments ago. And he, he said, if you want to go higher, with your thoughts. If you want to go higher, 
then you must change your behavior and what you're doing and come in line with the truth. And the truth is the word of God. Hallelujah. You know, and God has many, many names. And I'm sure you, uh, most of you have studied about the names of God. Jehovah Jireh, which means God, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, which means God who goes into battle before me. Hallelujah. Uh, what's some other ones? Uh, Jehovah Rapha, uh, the God that healeth me. Right. Hallelujah. He's got all of these names. And so when Freddie says, ask him who he wants to be in your situation. And he'll tell you, I want to be Jehovah I want to be Jehovah Jireh to you. I want to provide for you. You know, we have a lot of single women who um, have, they've been with us for 20, 20, 21 years. Uh, they, they are single and they, they need encouragement that God is their provider. And just like the widow at Seraphath, you know, and, and the Lord gave me a word for uh, one of the ladies that is, is one of our, our ministers. And, um, when her husband passed away and, and she uh, didn't have a job and she doesn't have, uh, a lot of education. And, and she said, I, I, she said to me, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And, Immediately, the word came to me about Elijah, who went to Seraphath, and he told the widow, if you will bake me a little cake first, your meal will never run out, and your oil will never go dry. And I spoke that to her, and that was over four years ago. And the other day, we were talking, and she said, you know, every time I think that I'm not going to have money to pay my taxes or I think I'm not going to have money enough for my gasoline, I go back to the truth. And the truth is that he is her provider, that he is the one that provides for her. Hallelujah. And so I'm saying to you tonight that if you want to go higher with your thoughts, then you have to be willing to change your behavior.